Hello and welcome to Calico Flower Studio. I'm Danny, and recently I was so fortunate to have the opportunity to create a custom work of art for a friend of mine. He had just moved into a new space and needed some artwork. Um, he wanted a large piece to hang above his bed and rather than going out and buying something pre-made, he thought it would be better to commission an original work of art from an artist that he knows, which is why he came to me. He was open to whatever ideas I had, so I explained to him that I have been really craving the opportunity to make a large fiber art piece, even though that was something I had never done before. And even knowing that it was something that I'd never done before, it was, it was new territory for me. He still trusted me and said, go for it. I'm always so grateful for projects that allow me to have some freedom. So I just wanna express my gratitude for his confidence in me. To be honest, the process of making this piece was kind of like a crash course in fiber art. <laughs> full of ups and downs and twists and turns and lots of learning. But I'm so happy with how it turned out. And it's projects like these that I feel like really lift me up and expand my practice. And uh, when I do something like this, I just feel so empowered, like I can do anything. So I wanna share this process with you whether you're an artist or a person who's just tackling a really intense task, you'll see how the journey is not always easy, it's not always clear and uh, seamless. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> but it's so, so worth it. Not just in the end, but all along the way. So, with all that being said, sit back, relax, and enjoy the process. So, I started by gathering some inspiration, some photos. And then I made some sketches, all of which I abandoned pretty quickly. I think in my mind, I thought, with a fiber art piece, I should probably have a plan laid out. I was probably right. <laughs> but that's just not how I normally work. I'm a feel-your-way-through-it kind of gal. So eventually, I just dove in. I started piecing things together, feeling it out like I would with a paper collage. Turns out, fiber art is a process like no other. Every move you make takes time, especially if you're working big. There's cutting, there's ironing, there's sewing, stitching, trimming. It's not as immediate as other works I've done, so it is a laborious process. There's a quote or sentiment that I love to think about. It's from a short film that my husband was in recently, and I don't... I don't know how much I'm allowed to share, but um, <laughs> the film is about surfing. I'm probably going to get the specifics wrong, but the characters are talking about how in surfing, only about like 5% of the time you're out on the water, you're actually riding a wave. The other 95% is just paddling. So if you're going to surf, you have to learn to love paddling. <laughs> and that's the thing with art forms that are very process intensive. You got to learn to love the process. I got to tell you, I didn't even own an iron until I started this project. I'm such a millennial. <laughs> so I made these separate fabric collages that I was planning to piece together somehow, which it's something I might do in my paper collage practice. And I took a few stabs at it to see what would happen. And as I was doing this, I thought maybe it would help to have some kind of cohesive background 
So I constructed that, and I don't have that whole process recorded, but it was quite an adventure on my sewing machine. (laughs) And then I kept at it, but nothing was exciting me yet. Hi, baby. Yeah. I was beginning to think, oh man, what have I gotten myself into? So, I scrapped more than half of what I'd done and kept this portion that I still had hope for. (laughs) Kept cutting and rearranging and adding more parts, still feeling totally unsure of myself. I reached a point where I was like, oh my god, oh no, this is terrible. Now, I want to pause for a moment and talk about the U of making a work of art. (laughs) The U shape, this is how I think about it, the U shape may resemble the feeling of making a work of art because in the beginning, you start at the top, you're excited, full of ideas, you haven't started yet, but the possibilities are endless. There is so much potential and all is good. And then, You get started, and you begin to plummet, (laughs) because it's like, oh man, this is hard. (laughs) And then you reach the bottom, where the piece isn't finished, or it's halfway there, and you're like, oh my god, this is not good. What the hell am I doing? Where is this going? Can I do this? (laughs) But you keep going, and you keep trying things. And if you persevere, you may reach a point where you're like, okay, here we go. This is working. I think it's going to be okay. I know what I'm doing. (laughs) And at this point in this piece, I am at the bottom of the U. I'm thinking this thing just needs to be blown up. (laughs) Somehow I need a fresh start on this. So (laughs) to get myself back on track, I took a photograph of what you just saw on the wall, and I cut the photograph into strips. I figured, maybe I can deconstruct the whole piece and reconstruct it in a more interesting way. Turns out, I started climbing back up the U. I cut up the actual piece into strips and started piecing it back together based on my photo strips. And meanwhile... My studio has taken over our living room. And to piece each strip of the fabric collage together, I fused strips of fabric along the seams and, using my sewing machine, sewed each strip together. I did this one at a time because wrestling with a large fabric collage around a tiny sewing machine is, as you saw not long ago, quite a dance. But it worked. Holy shit, it worked. And now we're back, baby. I actually ended up creating a couple more sections to add on to the ends of this piece in order to make it a bit wider. But once I had my basic fabric design, I started playing around with embellishments like embroidery and weaving. Got to the fun part. I practiced a few different types of stitches, like couching, which I had never done before. I also did a little playing and experimenting. Then I stitched on the piece, right as it was hanging on the wall. After a few design elements were added in this way, I decided I should probably just take this thing down and use an embroidery hoop. Dahlia was very happy about that. Some of the moments I really enjoyed with this piece were the moments where just a little section of it was isolated within my embroidery hoop. It's like, no matter where I placed the hoop, this beautiful circular composition emerged. I love when large pieces have little moments like that, where you can zoom in and find something interesting. 
once again, I learned that embroidery is like paddling. So, <laughs> to take a break from that labor-intensive process, I switched back to adding some more fabric collage, this time in a smaller, more intricate way. Here's another shot of me woman handling this fabric under the sewing machine. And by this point, I become much more comfortable and confident about it. Finally, I add a few more stitches and I come to a point where I feel the design is complete. To polish off the piece and get it ready to hang, I fused a piece of fabric to the back. But before I did, I made sure to snap a few pictures of the backside because I feel like sometimes the back of a stitched fiber art piece is almost just as interesting as the front. <laughs> I, I think it's just a weird artist thing, I guess. <laughs> so fusing the back was a whole thing, a whole thing I had never done before, but which turned out pretty well, I think for the intended purpose of the piece. I attached a wooden board along the top, added some eyelet screws for hanging, and cleaned the piece up. As you can imagine, I needed to lint roll the hell out of this thing because cat hair is inevitable. And I trimmed up some loose strings and voila. After finishing the piece, I staged it in our dining room during the golden hour and basked in the glory of this finished piece <laughs> and then let my friend know that the piece was finished. Oh, and literally minutes before I left my apartment to deliver this finished piece to my friend, I realized, oh my gosh, I didn't sign it. But how does one sign a piece of fabric? Nick suggested I stitch in my signature, so I gave it a shot, and it actually looks like my normal signature, which is pretty cool. When I brought the piece to my friend and we installed it, I felt a great sense of relief because it ended up looking great in his room, and he loved it. I'm so proud of what I was able to accomplish, and like I said earlier, I feel empowered to do so much more in my practice because I took on this challenge and saw it through. I'm so grateful I had the opportunity to do it, not just for me, but for someone who I know will love it and appreciate it. So before I sign off here, just in case anyone out there is wondering, I do indeed take commissions. <laughs> I mostly do mixed media on wood panel, however, I can certainly do fiber artwork as well. If you're interested in learning more, please email me at dannymichaudart at gmail.com. Alrighty, my friend. Thank you for joining me and hearing my story. Whatever challenges you're facing, full of ups and downs, twists and turns, and moments of learning, I certainly hope you find a way to enjoy the process. Love ya! Please subscribe and thank you again. Bye!